the exact same time that I was in Israel earlier this month, a young woman named Masa Amini, who was 22 years old, was brutally beaten to death and killed by the Iranian government and their state sanctioned morality police because her clothing was inappropriate and immodest, according to the Iranian government. What did that mean? It meant the hijab that she was wearing, the head covering that she was wearing was accidentally too loose and you could see a little bit of her hair. So she was literally beaten to death. She died because of her clothing and her head covering, which, by the way, didn't always used to be mandatory in Iran. Um, it was really within our parents' lifetime that hijabs became mandatory under government rule and is a perfect example of big government gone wrong, where all of a sudden what you wear is determined by the people who hold political power. But in the wake of this whole protest, the government, or not protest, in the wake of the event, the government comes forward, says this young woman had pre-existing health conditions. She actually died of a heart attack. Nobody physically hurt her whatsoever in this process. Uh, she was fine. In reality, obviously, she was not. And uh, she ends up passing away. Her family comes forward and says she never had any pre-existing health conditions. And protests erupt all over the country. If you are not seeing this in the news, it's a shame. And frankly, it's disgusting that people aren't covering this because the entire country has erupted in chaos. Women and men are cutting off all of their hair and wearing their hair in public uh, to fight back against these crazy government rules. Women are burning their hijabs in the street saying we don't want to wear these anymore. And dozens of people now have been also killed, in addition to Masa Amini, for protesting against these crazy regime rules. So this death toll is growing every single day. Uh, and I want to share some of this with you. This is from The Guardian. Uh, the headline says death toll grows in Iran as Masa Amini protests continue for the 10th night in a row. At this point in time, at least 41 people have died in these protests sparked by Masa Amini's death. Uh, and it really starts to unpack. I don't have a subscription to The Guardian, but I wanted to show you this image. Like literally cars are being flipped upside down being flipped over everything is being set on fire protests have now happened for 10 days in a row and more than 40 people according to our most recent numbers that actually could be more people have been killed uh in the in the midst of these protests trying to make their voices heard so this is all happening and unfolding in real time it's heart-wrenching and completely disgusting to me that People are refusing to talk about this or refusing to cover this at length in the media, on social media. I made a post about this a very long time ago, uh, but we're really not hearing very much about it from either the political right or the political left. And people start coming forward with this story. A grassroots social media campaign starts erupting all over the Internet in the last several days with the hashtag Masa Amini to share her name and amplify her individual story to fight back against totalitarianism and to fight back against big government all over the world, not just here in the United States. Somehow, American feminists and left-leaning American women have twisted this whole situation to fit their agenda of what they feel politically persecuted by, instead of just standing in solidarity with women actually living through legitimate persecution. And this is the type of crap that they come up with to post on the internet. <laughs> So I'm going to restart that over again and I'll pause it. The Iranian government forcing women to wear hijabs is no different than the United States forcing them to be pregnant. I'm sorry. What? Misogyny is not a casualty of political instability. It's the cause of it. Countries that fail women fail everybody. This girl, Liz Plank, is a huge TikToker on the platform, followed by hundreds of thousands of people. She's verified on TikTok. And this is the post that she decides to make as a feminist icon on TikTok about what happened to Masa Amini. That forced pregnancy, which, by the way, is not happening in the United States of America. That doesn't exist. That's a political buzzword you're using to fit your narrative and try to convince people of your wrong opinion. That forced pregnancy in the United States is the same. It's no different 
then a government that allows for no freedom of speech whatsoever. Good luck posting this TikTok in Iran, by the way, Liz. No different than the Iranian government forcing women to wear certain clothing to cover themselves up because it's immodest of them not to do so. Really? Really? That's the line we're going with here. And I started doing this big deep dive all across social media at this point because I saw this post and just wanted to die a little inside, frankly. Is, is it not impossible for us to just have sympathy and empathy for what other women around the world are going through without trying to make it all about ourselves? Talk about arrogance and privilege, by the way. I do this whole deep dive because I'm stunned and appalled at how bad this post actually was, but this post doesn't exist only in isolation. This post gets amplified on other social media platforms in addition by the worst hot takes I have ever seen about what's happening in Iran. So in case you needed any more convincing that Getter is better and is the place to be and Twitter is a dumpster fire of human chaos that signs point toward revelation because of, here we go. This is what you see on Twitter about what happened in Iran last week. Women in America, this, this, trend, this word was trending. Women in America was trending all over Twitter today for several reasons, largely in response to a tweet from Marsha Blackburn talking about uh, this situation in Iran and talking about how women in America stand with the women in Iran, basically. Tweet goes viral. Women in America as a phrase starts trending all over social media. Way to make it about ourselves instead of actually just standing in solidarity with real persecution and real oppression of women. Here's one for you. Women in America should be able to access health care without the fear of being killed for it. And then there's a meme of supposedly Republican Jesus that says, I know he raped you, Sally, but what's really important is the Senate seat. Okay. Marlene Robertson adds on, it's sickening to watch Republicans fake support for Iranian women while knowing that their objective is to have the same oppression for women in America. That's not all. Mayo Sunflower at Mayo is Spicy on Twitter says women in America are about to burn the GOP to the effing ground. OK, again, what that has to do with what's happening in Iran would love to know. Liam Nissan says nobody should be surprised when a country elects a female Nazi leader in reference to what happened in Italy. And by the way, the fact that I have forgotten to say this up to this point is so sad. If you're watching from Italy, congratulations on your first female prime minister. We're going to talk about everything Georgia Maloney tomorrow and really unpacking the Italian uh, elections and everything that the world is saying about Italy all in the stream tomorrow. So I'm really excited about that. Don't think I'm, I don't want to talk about that. I really, really do. Also, as a side note, somebody said on social media to me today that Georgia Maloney looks exactly like a middle aged version of me. And I'm still struggling with how to unpack that. Frankly, I think it's a compliment. She's a beautiful woman. So let me know if you agree with that in the live chat. But we will come back to the Italian elections tomorrow. I just wanted to put that side note in. OK, anyway, Liam Nissan says no one should be surprised when a country elects a female Nazi leader. I mean, look at all of the Republican women in America doing nothing, doing absolutely nothing when classrooms full of children are slaughtered with assault rifles. OK. Southern Sister Resister says women in Russia and Iran are protesting under threat of violence and death. Women in America are registering to vote under penalty of death for being pregnant in states run by fascist Republicans, the future is female and the time is now in every nation for women to rise up. Where do these people come from? I, I can't. Barbara May says, do women in America realize that what women in Iran are going through now will be us if the Republicans take power? These people are psychotic. And I just find it so disgusting that thousands of women are literally putting their lives on the line, breaking laws that they know they will be executed for breaking by freely assembling to have a protest, by making their voices heard in a protest, by burning their hijabs in the street in front of the Iranian police, by posting online, which, by the way, they actually can't even do anymore because they took away their Wi-Fi access in solidarity with Masa Amini? 
How can we not just appreciate and amplify that without being so far up our own butt as American women that we have to make it all about ourselves? And we're equating the ending of Roe v. Wade, which is saving millions of lives, by the way, to being brutally beaten to death by the Iranian morality police because all of a sudden Republicans are fascists.